Shalom, shalom to the elect of Israel. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Hero, our Big Brother, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the King of Kings, the one we are patiently, patiently waiting for to come and establish a righteous kingdom on this planet here. His name is Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles from the great millstone that taught us this truth. And now salutation, peace to all the brothers out there, day in and day out, doing the work of the Lord in sincerity and in truth. And to the large uh, multitude, the hopeful elect, starting with 144,000, I pray that the Lord will continue to keep all of us in the time that we are about to enter into, which is what Jacob, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. I pray that the angels will guide us through it. Okay. And I pray that the path that the Lord has created for us to walk in it, we will continue to walk in it eh? until Yahweh Shai gets us out of here. I pray this message find all of you in perfect peace. Again, all praise is honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our King, Yahweh Shai. And as our beloved Apostle Tohar from the Great Millstone proclaim or declare 2024 to be the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble and family, that's exactly what we are seeing right now. You see, the nations are gathering together. America finally said, actually, there's a, a news article flowing right now. In, I think it, it, it came from Political. Is saying that America is about to enter the war in the Middle East, okay, which is what West Asia, you see. But uh, Putin also made a declare, uh, uh, he gave a speech yesterday and it was very, very profound. So clearly, the, everybody know what time it is. Everybody know what time it is. We know that American dollar is about to be done away with. Majority of the countries are walking away from the American dollar. And without the American dollar, finally the West is finished. So they are going to war to maintain that hegemony. That's what it's all about. They are going to war to, to, uh, uh, to uh, what is it called? Uh, whoever wins the war, who, that's the person that's going to, you know what, determine which currency we use moving forward. But this time it's going to fail because this is the last leg of the Roman Empire. This is the end of Esau's kingdom. Esau is the self-proclaimed white man. That's right. And Jacob is you so-called Negroes, Latinos, African-Americans, Native Americans. This message is for you. This good news. It is for you. Your king is coming. Yahweh Shai is coming. And he's sending his men out there to warn you, to teach this word, to bring the good news, the gospel of Yahweh Shai. It's not what you learn in plantation Christianity. No, this is the gospel of Yahweh Shai. This is the organic food that we are eating in these last days. Eh? And it's nourishing us. Eh? It's, 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 it's directing our path. You see, we didn't get this from the plantation Christianity. No, no, we didn't get this. But we thank the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, for bringing these men, starting with our head apostles from the great millstone, eh, to teach us this truth. And we are forever grateful to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekwakudash. He gets all the glory, he gets all the honor, and he gets all the praise. We're going to get right into it. We're going to open it up with Revelation chapter 22, verse 6. And he said unto me, It says, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord, Yahweh, power of the holy prophet, sent his angel to show unto his servants the things, to hear that the things which might shortly be done. The same way Yahweh Shai told the, um, the apostles when they asked us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 3 there. It says, tell us what shall be, what signs should we be looking for? You know what? In terms of your second coming, give us a clue and show us. The Lord told them exactly what should be, what they should be looking out for. It says farming and pestilences, rumors of war, wars, nation rising up against nations. These are all the things that are happening right now. You see, so here, this is what the angel said when the Lord sent the angel to John, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, John the Apostle, eh? John the Revelator, some people call him John the Revelator because he is the one that wrote a revelation. That's right. 
He was the last prophet that died. Yahawashai kept him until he gave him what is going to be happening in the last days. And that's the time that we are living in. The last revelation. And revelation is to, revelation means what? To reveal. And he says here, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord Yahweh power of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. He says, behold, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. You see that red letter? Our King Yahweh Shai speaking. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. You see, blessed, we are keeping the sayings of the prophecy of this book. We are watching, we are praying, and, you know, and blowing the trumpet, warning Israel. And you so-called Negroes, Latinos, African Americans, Native Americans, so-called black, this message is for you. Your king is coming. He says here, And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Eh? After the angel gave John everything that Yahweh uh, sent him to do. Because hear what the angel says. And then John wanted to worship the, the angel. And hear what the angel said. It says here, And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book for the time is at hand so this is the time to proclaim what the lord told us family going back to 2000 plus years ago you see everything is happening right now we have to tell the nations what is coming you see we are this not the time to fold your hands and sit back no matter what we have channels been taken down but guess what we have a backup channels and we're going to continue to bring this word out we're not going to be discouraged yeah it is a pain but guess what it is condition of the battle, and we're going to continue to do what we have to do to glorify our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Lukakadash. It says, and he says unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. You hear that? The time is at hand. He said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. And that's the time that we are living in. Whether they take heed or whether they wanna, whether they listen to this message eh, and repent and be sealed, family, all of our job is to get the word out. At the end of the day, the Lord knows his elect. The elect are going to receive this message and they're going to they're gonna pray to the Lord. They're going to repent and the Lord is going to deliver them. It's that simple. It's not for everybody. This message is not for everybody. But family, we're going to get it. We have five articles to cover just to show you the time that we are living in. Russian President Vladimir Putin said something important. Very, He's, He made a statement yesterday, a speech, not a statement, a speech yesterday. And I got this from Haltena Radio Show. It said, Russia president lays out his judgment on the continual existence of the U.S. and Europe. Listen to this. This is very profound because according to Bible prophecy, it is going to be Russia that is going to take down Babylon, the Great, and the West. So it's not coincident that family, the Lord is tearing up the spirit in the king of the meat, which is Russia. That's what you are witnessing. It is going to be Russia that's going to destroy America and, and then the West. Take down the, uh, what is it called? The Roman Empire. The last leg of the Roman Empire. Because America and the West is nothing but what? Rome 2.0. That's what you are looking at. In a speech in Russia today, Vladimir Putin laid out his judgment on the continual existence of the US and the EU. Pay attention, family. Listen to what he said. He said, the concepts of honor, trust, and decency are not for them. You hear that? Are not for who? The West and America. And they got used to spitting on the whole world. Eh? He went on. Indeed, the Western elite have become a symbol of total unprincipled lies. You hear that? Unprincipled lies. Let's read on. An excerpt from today's speech appears with English subtitles below. To even the most dense viewer, it should occur that this man is laying out 
the reason the United States and Europe should no longer exist. You hear that? And that is called Third World War. The last war before Yahweh Shai shows up. That is why we lift up the name of our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukakudash. He says here, an excerpt today's speech appears with English subtitle below. To even the most dense viewer, I'm repeating that again, it should occur that this man is laying out the reason the United States and Europe should no longer exist. That is a hell of an ugly reality coming from a man whose country literally has the ability to wipe us all out. It is almost as if he is priming the world for what may be coming soon. Here is the speech. The speech is here. Family, I'll put this in the description box. So you are witnessing the end of Babylon the Great. Indeed, 2024 is going to be a beautiful year for the hopeful elect, the Hawa Rataza. But let's read the opinion of Hal Turner. It says, this reason, the elites of the West have become a symbol of total unprincipled lies. It's because to date, there have been absolutely no consequences for them as they go about all their total unprincipled lying. No one gets fired, no one gets prosecuted, no one gets thrown in jail. This needs to change, but it won't because the very people who can fire, prosecute, and jail the liars are the people doing all the lying. So now their own people are calling them out because we know that what? Esau Edom, according to the book of uh, I, uh, what's it called? Psalm 59, 11 or 58, 11. Let me see if I can bring it out quickly. Eh? They can never be trusted. You see, this is how the Lord created them. He says before they said, is this some 58.3? Let's see, I think 58.3. 58.3. Yes. Tawada Yahawa Bashem Yahushai. It says the wicked, which is what? Esau Edom. Yes, right. He is the wicked. I mean, yes, we are wicked among our people. All nations have wicked people. But the actual wicked, wicked Malachi 1 4 is the so called white man. That's right. Esau is the border of wickedness, according to Malachi 1 4. He is the one the Lord gave the red uh, sword. He is, sorry, he is the red horse whom the Lord gave the sword to, to take peace from the earth. Revelation 6 verse 4. The red sword, that is the nation of what? Edom. Esau's name was changed to Edom, the Edomites, self-proclaimed white men. Today they call themselves Europeans. He says, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That's right. They can never tell the truth. But the whole world is waking up to it though. But this time, this is it. America, the West, they're never going to go around the world pillaging, raping uh, nations, resources. Those times are done. It is over for them. But listen to this article here. It says 50 year US hegemony in the Middle East now being challenged. Yes, because it's the end of the war. You see, when they, they are, well, at one point they were able to go to Iraq, Libya, and all these places and drop bombs and nobody held them accountable. That's right. There was no accountability. You see, oh yeah, who cares? You know, it's only Arab children. It's okay. You know, yeah, we are in the West. You know, we don't have to worry about them. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the mindset, but it's changing because the Lord is about to judge Esau Edom. It is over for them. America, you are less looking at the end of an empire. Eh? 50 year US hegemony in the Middle East now being challenged. Analysts, it says here in the next few years, the US may face hostility and frustration from people in the Middle East. Scott Bennett, a former US Army psychological warfare officer and State Department counter-terrorism analyst told Sputnik. Washington is bracing for a possible new war in the Middle East, a scenario that is dangerous for the U.S. President Joe Biden's re-election chances. Political report citing unnamed sources. They argue that White House officials are pondering the U.S. response 
responds to what they fear could expand from the current war in Gaza into a broader protracted regional conflict. No, we are telling you, you're going to the fight. You're going to fight the war. The Lord has put that spirit in you. He's about to let his power shown because you already declare it. All these nations are going to gather in the what? In the valley of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat means what? The Yahweh have judged. That's how, that's where the Lord is about to judge all these nations. He's bringing them, them into what? The valley of Jehoshaphat. That's so-called Middle East. But we, but it's not, but it is West Asia. It says here, the nations will be judged. You hear that? It said, for behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. That's right. The Lord is going to gather us once again. He's the one that spread us among all these nations. We serve them. We build their towns. We build their farms. We, they made a lot of money off us. But the Lord is about to gather his elect. Barakata Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai. Tawada Yahweh, Tawada Yahushai. Tawada Yahweh, Tawada Yahushai. For mercy. He says here, I will also gather all the nations. Listen to this, beloved. And I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That is what is happening right now. And we're telling you before it happens. So our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, will get all the glory. He says here, and will plead with them for my people and for my heritage, Israel. It's all about the children of Israel. Not the so-called fake people living on the land right now calling themselves the, the people of the book. No. They are all imposters. We know there are some of us among them. The majority of those people living on the land, they don't belong on the land. The land, the land don't belong to them. But we are sitting back. It is the Lord that's going to take us home in style. Barakata Yahweh Ba'ashem Shai. It says, And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. Nobody's salvation is only for the children of Israel, and whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Are you listening to this? Yeah, they divide the land uh, be between themselves. You have Palestinians fighting for one side, so-called Israel fighting for another side. That's right. The Lord is coming to put an end to all this. The same people fighting over the land, they are the same people about to turn around and build that land for the children of Israel. That is what is coming. Eh? Verse 3. No, no, verse 2 says here, I will also gather all the nation and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and, and, and will plea with them. Therefore, my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. That's what, the, that's what you are witnessing right now. The war is coming. Nobody can stop this war. Nobody. That's right. The Lord said there will be three wars before Yahweh Shai comes. And this is the last war. This is the last war. Thank the Lord for that. Barakata Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. We are almost about to go home. It says here, the U.S. now faces further deterioration across the Middle East. Because why? It is the Lord's judgment. The same way he built Pharaoh up, like he says in the book of Romans chapter 9, verse, verses, verse 17 or verse 21. It says before, actually, no, I don't. Let me do this quickly. Let me go there. I don't want to misquote it. This is the work of the Lord. The book of uh, Romans. Am I Roman? Romans 9. No, is it Romans 9 or Romans 8? I think it's Romans 9, verse 17 or 21. Let me see which one is it. Let's go verse 17 or 19. Yeah, verse 17, Tawada Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai. It said, For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. That's what you are witnessing. The Lord built up America. At one point, America and the West, nobody was able to go against NATO, period. That's right. The same way the Lord built Pharaoh up and nobody was able to go against Pharaoh. Guess what? The Lord brought Pharaoh down. He drowned all Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. That's the power that we serve. And it's about to do the same eh, to America and NATO. The last leg of the Roman Empire. That is what is coming. The U.S. now faces further deterioration across the Middle East. The terrorist attack in Iran's 
Carmen, the ongoing Houthi attacks in the Red Sea, the strikes in Lebanese, Beirut, and other threats to increase tensions in the region. That's what this is all the laws doing. And this is all the laws doing. Now, all of a sudden, they're giving you Epstein's list. They're releasing all these pedophiles. And no, the Lord is exposing all these demons. Okay? It's the end of their empire. It is over for them. All right? This is just another distraction. Third World War is coming. That's what you should, you should worry about. All these pedophiles, none of them are going to get any justice. Eh? No. Because they are the same one in, in, sitting in the judge's seat. They are the same one controlling the media. They control everything. They control your finances. Who's going who's gonna to hold them accountable? Nobody. But the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, He is the judge. That's right. That's why he said, wait ye upon me while I rise up to the prey. He's not going to at all acquit the wicked. Keep that in mind. The Lord is about to judge this demon. All the wickedness that they've been doing. All these false prophets out there. Your TDJs, your old sin and well, whoever is out there preaching the false gospel. That's why they're all in one bucket. Eh? They are all worshipping Satan. And the Lord is about to expose them. That's what is coming. You see? That's what is coming. Nobody's going to escape the Lord's judgment. Nobody. Let's bring out the next article. So as you see, yes, things are heating up in the, in the, in the so-called Middle East, but it is the Lord. 50-year U.S. hegemony is in the Middle East now being challenged. Oh yeah, it's been challenged because the Lord is the one doing it. And the Lord is the one doing it. And listen to this. This is also coming from Sputnik this morning. It says here, one in three United Nations countries are opting for the de-dollarization. You hear that? One in three. Think about that. One in three nations are about to dump the American dollar. Let's read that. Let's read that. De-dollarization is the process of reducing the U.S. dollar's hegemony in global trade and financial operation by shifting, by shifting to alternative exchange methods such as national currencies and domestic payment system, as well as transferring currencies reserves. You hear that? Because what? America used that dollar to do what? Put sanctions on nations because they had the monopoly. All right? If you want to trade with another country, guess what? You have to buy the U.S. dollars to trade with your neighbor. What sense does that make? Meanwhile, your currency means nothing. So everybody was holding U.S. dollar. And that's how you was able to just print, 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 print. That money is backed by nothing. The money is backed by nothing, family. So the moment these nations drop that dollar, it is over for them. So the only thing left now is what? Third World War. And that is how the Lord has set it up. We thank our power, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and that He didn't leave us here to die in our captivity, and to be subject to payment, and live this miserable life. No. You see? He's about to redeem us. Barakata Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekwakudaj for mercy. And we can't wait. Eh? It says here, a third, um, it says a third of United Nations member states have already opted for de-dollarization and decided to rely on national currencies to conduct payment. Sputnik anal analysis has found. The analyst, the analysis which look into statements made by officials from 193 United Nations countries in international and Russian media show that representatives of at least 68 United Nations openly supported the process of de-dollarization or stated that they were talking, sorry, taking measures to this effect. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. De-dollarization accelerating within the BRICS. The BRICS are these nations that the original uh, nations that started, you know, uh, uh, creating their own form of currency. No, starting their own form of trade by trading in their own currencies. And but then they are talking about maybe introduce a currency that, you know, uh, a, a currency away from the U.S. dollar. How about that? BRICS is what? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And now they just added, I think, five additional countries beginning uh, January 1st of this year. According to the study, the most decisive cause to scrap the greenback and replace it with national currencies came from politicians whose countries are members of major regional organizations such as the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. 
and the BRICS, which originally comprised with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, but was expanded to include a host of other nations on January 1st. And that's what we are witnessing. Because family, the Lord is systematically bringing America and the West down. Because Yahweh Shai is about to take over the kingdom. Our king, Yahweh Shai, is about to take over the kingdom. And that's what is coming. And we thank the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. U.S. and South Korea hold live fire drills near North border. You see, Yahweh Shai told us what? Rumors of war. I quoted it earlier. Let's go. When the angels, sorry, when the apostles asked Yahweh Shai on, in Mount Olive, tell us what is going to be, uh, what, what signs should we be looking out for? Looking at, listen to what Yahweh Shai said. Eh? It's not coincident that all these nations are now preparing for war. Family, this is Bible prophecy. The Yahweh Shai says, what well, the testimony of our king, the redeemer of Israel, is what? The spirit of prophecy. And that's what we are doing right now. Honoring our king, Yahweh Shai, because everything the Lord told us is going to be happening, family. It's like, it's like, a, it's, it's like, it's, 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 it's like we can't believe it. It's, it's, it's here. It's, it's here. You see, it is here and we see it clearly. Everything the Lord said is come is going to bring to pass. It is here, family. We are witnessing it. Eh? It says the vision, it says, although it tarry, it says, wait for it. It shall surely come. And the vision is clearly here, family. That's the prophecy. It's here. But hear what the Lord said. Uh, this is uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount Olives, this is our King Yahweh Shai, the disciple came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You hear that? Take heed. No man deceive you. Esau is going to come down with great wrath. He's going to promise you all type of goodies. He's going to tell you to take microchip and then everything's going to get back to normal. No. You take that microchip, the Lord is going to kill you. All right? The Lord is going to kill you. We have to wait on the Lord. It's the Lord that is allowing him to fool the two-thirds of our people and the rest of the, the, the nations. But he's not going to fool the elect. we rather die eh, and let the Lord raise us up. And that should always be your mindset. You see? Don't take anything this devil offers you. Not the microchip that is bringing. Revelation 13, 16. It says here, and Yahweh shall answer and said unto me, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars. Isn't that what we're hearing right now? U.S. and South Korea hold live fire drills near north border. That means what? That war is also coming. We have what? Ukraine and Russia still going at it. Houthi, Israel, Yemen, Middle East, every, every, uh, Lebanon, everybody's about to get in. You see, everybody is about to get it in. You see here, for nation, it says, let me go here again. Listen to this. It says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, lack of food, lack of bread, and pestilences, diseases, Eh? Right now, diseases are spreading wild. It's like wildfire in Gaza right now. Eh? And earthquakes in diverse places. The year began with what? A major earthquake in Japan. This is what the Lord, Yahweh Shai, told us to be looking out for. In diverse places. He says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. That's what you are witnessing. So the, the king is coming. The king is coming. You got to make sure that you are ready. Don't be like the foolish virgins. You got to be a wise virgin. The five wise virgin, you know, you have this oil, okay, which is the word. And because the Lord says what? Knowledge and wisdom is going to be the stability of the time and the strength of our salvation. But the fear of the Lord is his treasure. You have to be afraid of the Lord. You see, it's very, very important. A fear of the Lord, because when you fear the Lord, you're going to do the things that are pleasing to him. You see, don't worry about what a man thinks of you. You see, what can a man do to you? A man can do nothing to you unless the Lord sanctify. If you're doing the things that are pleasing to the Lord, come on. If you would die, he says the Lord, I remember he says what? He says, precious are the blood of the, the, the blood of his saints. Is this, is this, let me see. Is this Psalm, I think it's Psalm 126. It says, precious are the blood in the, precious are the blood of the saints in the sight of the Lord. Roughly paraphrasing. You see, our blood are precious to the Lord. 
we give our life for this gospel. Yeah, you know what? Though? At the end of the year, Hawashah is going to raise us up. Because remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit this, the kingdom to come. We are going to be changed. So this body here, yeah, you saw one say he can have it. You see, he can have it. You understand? And that's the mindset that we have to be in. You see, but the Lord got us, uh, the, the Lord already made provisions for us. You see, then that's the mindset. You got to have the faith to believe it. Esau is about to lose. Esau, this is it for the self-proclaimed white man. His kingdom is coming to an end. And he is pissed. So he's going to take everybody to war. If he can rule the world, he's taking everybody to war. And that's how the Lord set it up. We thank the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, the Quack for that. Eh? It says here troops from South Korea and the United States have held, you know what? The, the Spirit just says, I gotta, I gotta go to some, is it Psalm 116? Please bear with me. Psalm 116, I wanna make sure. Is it Psalm 116.5? Oh, yes, Psalm, Psalm 116, 15, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord Yahweh is the death of his saints. Are you listening to this? That's right. Precious, that's how the Lord sees it. Let's look up the word precious. Costly, highly valued. And that's the, let's find out the Hebrew word is what? Your car. Your car, your car. It says here, to, to esteem, be prized, be valuable, be precious, be costly, be appraised. To be precious, be highly valued, be esteemed, be costly. You hear that? That is the elect. You see? That is the elect, especially the men of the Lord. You see? So we are not losing. We are not losing. So keep in mind, Esau can do nothing to you. Esau can do nothing to you. All right? Esau can do nothing to you. The Lord is controlling him. It says, troops from South Korea and the United States have held week-long combat exercises involving heavy weaponry and live-firing drills close to the North Korean border. Seoul has confirmed. The drills, South Korea said on Thursday, were conducted to boost the Allies' military readiness. Readiness. You hear that? Readiness for what? War. Eh? Readiness in the face of expanded threats from North Korea. And that's what we are praying for. You see? That's what we are praying for. 2024, family is going to be a beautiful year for the hopeful elect. Yahweh Raktas are. It's a U.S. preparing for expansion of Gaza conflict. Political. You hear that? U.S. is preparing for Gaza conflict. They are going to join it. It's called Third World War. They're going to go after Iran. And then Russia is going to get involved. And family, when, when that happens, look up. Your salvation draweth nine. Because Yahawashah is going to show up in the midst of Third World War. Before those nuclear missiles start flying, guess what? That's right. The elect got to be redeemed. We don't know how it's all going to play out, but the Lord is going to redeem his elect. He says, if he tarries, there shall no flesh be saved. And the elect will be beamed up into the chariot. Yahweh Ratazah. You see, U.S. preparing for expansion of Gaza conflict. Political. Washington is discussing scenarios that could potentially draw it into a war in the Middle East. Officials told the outlet, no, they are not looking for any reason. They are, going, they are going to war because the money is all boils down to the dollar. You can't sit back and see everybody walk away from the dollar. They have to use the dollar. The dollar is what gives them the power. So if everybody walks away from the dollar, the West is finished. America and its ally, NATO and European Union, it is done. So guess what? They have to fight for that dollar. Okay? That's it. They got to fight for that dollar. That's how the law set it up. You see, Washington is discussing scenario. I already read that. It said the White House is worried that the conflict in Gaza could expand to other parts of the Middle East and is drawing up plans. He's drawing up plans for a possible U.S. response if that happens. Political has reported, citing informed officials. 
Internal discussions are underway in the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden about scenarios that could see Washington drawn into a major war in the region, the outlet said in an article on Thursday. We say all praises, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, because we are about to go home. Tawada Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Tawada, Tawada, Tawada simply means thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the potential for wider conflict in the Middle East is growing, and that's what we want to hear. That's what we want to hear, said sources, including a senior Biden administration official, because Russia is going to get in. Eh? Russia is going to get in because it's all set up perfectly. Mm? Isaiah 13, we're going to pick it up from verse 17. You see the headline, it says what? Babylon will fall to the need, right? Babylon, which is America, Eh? It's highlight will fall to what? the need, which is what Russia. Behold, I will stir up the needs against them. Listen to this. I will stir up the needs, Russia, eh? which shall not regard silver and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Eh? It says here, their bows, their missiles, the bows represent what? Their missiles also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, children. Eh? It says here, their eyes shall not spare children. That's the spirit the Lord is putting in them to finally bring down this kingdom. Because yes, Yahweh is coming. Russia is going to be, the Lord is just using Russia to fulfill prophecy. Yahweh is coming in the midst of it. It says in the book of um, Revelation 12 verse 7, Daniel and his angel fought against what? The dragon, which is what? Babylon, America. America and its allies. The last leg of the Roman Empire, that's the dragon, that's the beast. That Yahweh Shai, when he shows up, all these nations are going to put their differences aside and tend to fight the second coming, to fight our king Yahweh Shai, like it says in the book of 2 Ezra chapter 13. And when it was done with them, nothing was to be perceived but dust and smoke. That's why the Lord promised all the birds, the fowls of heaven, a great feast on that day. They're going to drink the blood of captains and slave eh? that's right free men born men that's it. he promised the fowls of heaven all these animals they're gonna have a field day the day of the lord that's right that's what is coming he says here the abode shall also dash i just read that he said and babylon the glory of the kingdoms eh? because everybody loves america back then everybody wanted to model their country after america yeah america was very well respected all over the world you see, Hollywood, entertainment, sports, athletes, all come from America. Eh? That's right, the glory of the kingdom. That's right, the America is the headquarters of the beast system. But the Lord is about to live, level it. And when he's done with it, it's going to be a desert, like he said. America is going to be the lake of fire. That is what is coming. Eh? That's what is coming. It says, in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees. Chaldees were used to be what? The wisest men in babylon the ancient babylon but this is the modern day babylon but we it's also known as what modern day what basra because these are all the capital city of what esau edom and eh? not babylon not babylon but babylon this modern day babylon that's right it's esau edom this is where this is his headquarters he owns it he's the one directing the ship eh? the self-proclaimed white man and babylon the glory of kingdom the beauty of the chaldees Eh? The Chaldees represent what? The, um, they represent the, I think, the, the wisest men. So it, it will be the modern day Chaldees will be your elite of this society. Kasadia, right? Kasdi. The Hebrew word is Kasdi. But here. Strong's H3778. Kasdin. 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 But here. Those persons consider the wisest in the land of the land by extension. So is this modern day with what your so-called Illuminatis? That's why your elite of this society, the ones controlling your presidents, your prime ministers, your governors. That's why your prime ministers and your president they are nothing but puppets. They are just sitting there. They are just the figurehead that everybody attacks. But the ones controlling those presidents, you don't, you're not going to see them. Those are your elite. And they are going to be the first crop of slaves in the kingdom. That is what is coming. And we're telling you before it happens, through the spirit and power of our king, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. It says here, 
and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, eh, your elite, eh, shall, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what did, how the Lord overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. That's right. And then when we were done with it, what? Sodom became what? A desert. And that's, right. that's exactly what is coming to America. That's what America is going to be. When the Lord is finished with America, it's going to be a desert as also. Okay? It says here, it shall never be inhabited. You hear that? Nobody's going to live on the land. Eh? Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tend there. Eh? All these people like they are the Ishmaelites, you know, all your Elamites, your so-called Indians, they come, they set little businesses, their gas stations, and eh? selling Jake all type of wicked, uh, abominable food. No, nobody's going to be setting up business here. It's over. It is over. It says here, it says, Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the, prof, uh, the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts, you hear that? Wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. Let's check out, let's read another version here. Let's get the NLT. What does NLT say? It says, desert animals will move into ruined city and the houses will be haunted by howling creatures. Owls will live among the ruins and wild goats will go there to dance. That is what's going to, um, that's, that's the future of America, family. You hear that? That is the future of America. It said, the wild beasts of the desert. Let's close this and then get to verse, verse 22. Isaiah 13 verse 22, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and the dragons in their pleasant palaces and her time is near to come. You hear that? Her time is near to come. So everything now you're witnessing right now, America about to join the Middle East, that's right, it's leading to this year. It's leading to the destruction of Babylon the Great. It says the least of the flock. It says in the book of Jeremiah 49, 20, which is what? The least of the flock is what? Israel right now. They're going to draw America in. And then, and then they are placed. Israel is going to be level and America is going to be level. That's how the Lord set it up. He says, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and the dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come and her days shall not prolong. No, we are. this is it. Her days will not prolong. After once this third world war start, family, you can sign it off. America is, is over. It is finished. It is finished. This is it. Nobody is going to rise up and build back better. Nobody is going to uh, give you, uh, put you in any 15-minute cities. It's all pipe dream. You hear? It's all pipe dream. You're not going to be eating bugs? No. Yahweh is coming to set up a righteous kingdom. Esau, 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 Esau is carnal. He thinks his kingdom is going to go on forever because that, that's just pride. No, no kingdom ever, 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 ever was established to be here forever. No. If you read the Bible, it tells you every kingdom that the Lord set up, eventually the Lord takes you down. Daniel chapter 2. Read it. And this is the last one before Yahweh shall set up his kingdom. You've lost your mind, man. These people are too proud. Way too proud. Iran. Iran vows. Okay? This is from Al Mayyadin. Eh? I call it Al Mayyadin uh, website. Iran vows to avenge martyrs' blood in common mass funeral procession. Three days ago. Is it two days ago or three days ago? During Suleimani, uh, I think it was like a fourth, is it fourth year anniversary when Trump took down. Uh, killed a uh, uh, Iranian, uh, what is it called, Commander Suleimani. They, I think they were, I think, yeah, it happened 2019 or 2014. I think it was, yeah, for the fourth year anniversary. So there were a whole group of people marking that anniversary and there was a terrorist attack. And yes, Iran vowed to what? To what? To pay back those who did it. So family, things are heating up. Things are heating These are the things that the Lord said we should be looking out for. You see, top Iranian officials have spoken in a funeral ceremony held for the 89 martyrs of Kamen terrorist attack. Iranians mourn the lives of tens of people killed in a terrorist attack in the Kamen province earlier on Wednesday in a ceremony attended by thousands. Iranian President Ibrahim Rasi spoke during the funeral procession held for 89 people, excuse me, 
killed on Wednesday while attending a massive march held in remembrance of the late resistance leader Martha Qasem Soleimani. During his speech, Raisi pointed to the diligent work of Martha Soleimani who expanded the resistance movement in the region, forwarding its plans and establishing its long-term program. In this context, Iran president shed light on the Palestinian resi uh, resistance successful confrontation of the Israeli occupation confirming that no one can disregard the role of the martyr Soleimani mirrored in today's victory. It's a large crowd family. And the Middle, the middle East is heating up. And we say, Barakata Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakodash. You see, let's go to here, let's go here. Million demonstrate in Yemen, the blood of the free, brief, free uh, victory. Hear that? Millions demonstrate in Yemen the blood of the free breeze victory. Yes, America is going to be chased out of the Middle East. And the West in period, the time when they used to go there and do whatever their heart desired. No, the Lord is about that, that aura that they had, that power that they had. No, the Lord is taken away from it. That's what the Lord says in the book of Joel. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Eh? Let's bring it out. Let's bring it out. Joel, is it, is it 310? It said, Joel, I think the Joel 3.10. Let's get there. Let's get there. They said, let the weak say I'm strong. That's what you are looking at. How can a small nation like Yemen, small, very, very small, go against the West? This is like what? David and Goliath, right? But they believe in themselves. They believe in what they are fighting for. You see? Because over the year, they sat back and watched the West destroy the Middle East. But the time has come where the Lord is about to bring the West, the Western so-called Western civilization. It's not civilized. These people are not civilized. Just, just, just look at that, uh, the list that they released, the Epstein list. It, it tells you these people are civilized. These people are animals, man. These people are filthy. Okay, these are the people ruling over us. The book of Joel chapter 3, verse 10, it said, beat, beat your plowshares into sword. The plowshares goes back to our farming equipment. Turn them into our missiles and guns and your pruning hooks into spears. Spears represent more than they were missiles. Let the weak say what? I am strong. That's what you are witnessing right now. You see, everybody is standing up. That's what is about to take place because what? It's the end of the world. The end of Esau's kingdom. The end of Esau. Esau is the end of the world. Since I coded it, let's finish with that family. And I hope you were edified. I just want to bring that out quickly and glorify the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Always giving thanks for what the Lord has done for us. Eh? The fact that he's bringing these prophecies to pass. We are constantly praying. Even when you are driving in your car, you're going home, you're at work. Constantly saying thank you. Praising our power, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Family, Yahweh Shai is about to change our fortunes. And you are witnessing the end of this kingdom. The king is about to change our fortunes. So let's live a life of gratitude, a life, a life of thanksgiving. Let's continue to walk in the path that he has created for us and showing appreciation. He's about to deliver us. All nations are going to see it. He's about to deliver us in style. Okay? Don't let nothing hold you back. Yes, don't let nothing hold you back. No matter what we are going through and your daily life, family, remember what the Lord says. He says what? The current suffering of this world doesn't compare to the glory that the Lord is going to reveal in us. That time is fast approaching. And we're going to continue to give thanks no matter what. Take down the video. We're going to, even if just one person hear this message, one person, okay? And then they, you know, and then, and then, and then they check this and they say, no, one person hear this, this message and turn their life around and they are the elect, the Lord is going to deliver them. And that's what it's all about. You see, that's what it's all about. You can take the channels down. He's not going to discourage us. No, because we know that this is the condition of the battle. That's what the Lord told us. You see, these are all this testing our faith. Are you going to give up because some, something happened to you? No. You continue to ask the Lord to give you strength to endure. That's why we pray for strength every day. Because sometimes these things p uh, pisses you off. You know? But it is what it is. You know? We're going to continue to give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai. Let's pick it up from verse 6. It says here, Then I consider... This is Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 6. Then I consider these things, and they were all made through me alone. And through none other... By me also they shall be ended, and by none other. You hear that? The Lord created this world, and it's about to end it. Just the way he, the same way he brought the flood, that's why. Right. And then through uh, Noah and his household, the world, were, the world was repopulated again. 
But the same thing the Lord's about to do, but this time with fire, especially America and Israel. He said, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Yeah? But hear what the, uh, the angel said. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, eh? when Jacob and Esau were born of him. Right? Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Right? Esau what? came out first. And then Jacob was holding on to what? Esau's heel. Meaning there was nobody else between them. So nobody's going to rule. Once Esau falls, it's Jacob that's holding the heel. Nobody else between them. Not Russia, not China, no. It is it's between Esau and Jacob. You see, and Jacob is what? So-called Negroes, Latinos, African-American, Native Americans, waiting for the Lord to deliver them. Because the Lord spread us, the Lord punished us, and yes, we deserve all the punishment the Lord brought upon us. All the hardship we went through, slavery, all these different captivities, we earned it. We earned it. But the same power is now about to show us mercy and deliver us. And we say, Barakata Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rukakudash. He says, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau, self proclaimed white man, now he called himself European, is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. I will leave it there. Beloved, I hope you are all edified. Again, all praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh our heavenly father and his only begotten son, our king, Yahweh Shai, who made all this possible for us. And we can't wait to see him face to face and give him thanks and, and appreciate him and glorify him. That's right. We're waiting to see him face to face that we can see him. We can open our mouth and say, Tawada king, for making it up, for giving your life for the children of Israel. We are looking forward to that day. And that day is fast approaching. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Shalom, beloved.